afternoon folks, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School, out here with another video today in our basic bushcraft series. What I wanted to discuss with you guys today is how to build an upside down or self-feeding fire. I've had a few requests about that. That was one of Nesmic's favorite setups, and it works really well with a tent or tarp setup like the tarp tent, scout tent that we have been working on with tent smiths. I've had a lot of requests to follow up on this tent smith's design and talk about you know where that's at in the project and right now we're still under R&D but we do have a 6x8 model coming soon from tent smiths that we're going to test out but what I want to talk to you about today was this is the same tarp tent design that we had set up across the way here at the Pathfinder School when we first showed this to you it's been sitting in this location under a tripod at the Pathfinder School for over three weeks right now it's rained it snowed, it snowed again, it's rained again, it's poured rain for almost 48 hours straight. And we put some hay inside here a couple weeks ago before a class so an instructor could sleep in this tent and test it out. And I can tell you that, you know, right here where the opening's at, it's a little damp. This, the straw is a little damp. But if you get back in here, this thing is absolutely bone dry back here. So if I were sleeping in here, I'd be bone dry, no question about that. This tent will keep you dry. It's designed to have these open flaps on the front that it has right here so that you can capture heat from the fire inside this pyramid and hold it in there and that's why Nesmic preferred this type fire in front of his shelter because it would throw heat into the shelter and feed itself throughout the night now you're going to have to put a little bit of wood on here every now and then and you may have to start it and get add some kindling to it in the beginning to get it going the way you want to to get it to burn down into the layers but once it starts burning down into the layers if you have it set up right it will feed itself for quite a few hours then you can lay some you know kindling and things like that and some extra wood inside your shelter and you can feed it when you need to if you wake up cool so give me just a minute here and we'll get this set up and we'll start talking about the self-feeding fire okay so let's talk about the basis of our self-feeding fire here basically a self-feeding fire is the same thing as an upside down fire lay used a lot by Nesmic he swore by this type of fire lay situation and you would need a couple more logs up here and they're really not for reflecting heat or a log backstop as much as they are angled to let the logs feed into the fire throughout the night as the bottom one burns they'll feed down into the fire and what we've done here is we've really just set up some bigger logs at the bottom and again this is part of the importance of understanding your landscape. You want woods that are going to take a long time to burn. Maybe they're damp or maybe they're hardwood type materials at the bottom of this fire. And I've used oak for all of this. Then my next one I've went up from the bottom I've went up two layers from there. Then I have put in some heavier pieces of damp pine on top of that. And I'm leaving space in between all of these log cabin type stackings so that we can take advantage of the venturi effect or the updraft in this fire so we'll put them fairly close together but not right on top of each other so we get that updraft and then i've taken some smaller pieces and put them on top so you've got your biggest at the bottom and your smallest at the top is basically the way that works i think what we're going to do is make this a layer and then what we'll do is we'll put our last or final layer on here will be pretty close together because this is what we're going to use to put our fire lay really on top of. We'll build our teepee type fire on top of this last layer of slatted pine. So we've got a layer of hardwood that's damp, we've got a layer of bigger pine that's damp, and then we've got a layer of smaller pine that's damp, and then we're going to use some fat wood to make feather sticks for our bird nest so that we can ignite this by flame. We'll use a cigarette lighter, five second rule. Five seconds of flame, that's all you're allowed. That's what I teach in my Pathfinder school for students that want to use lighters and things like that. Five seconds of flame is all it should take to ignite your fire. So we're going to make some feather sticks, make our fire lay on here, light our lighter for five seconds, and hopefully this bad boy is going to go up and it will give you a good example of how a self-feeding fire is built. Okay, so now I've built a basically just a big stack of small pines here it's all pine branches for the most part and I've left myself a space in here where I can put a pile of feather sticks of fatwood pine and that's what we're going to light and then we'll just kind of pull this over the top of it and that's going to become our fire lay and you can see I just piled those on there they're random 
not all of these sticks are pencil size or smaller, but because I've got the accelerant of pine sap in my fatwood, I'm going to be able to get plenty of burn time to ignite some of that material. All this stuff is pretty much off the ground and it's still wet, but it will burn and pine is going to be a very fast burning wood and that's important to understand when you're building fires with marginal materials or, you know, in damp conditions like this, you need to understand what materials are going to burn for you quickly, what materials are going to take ignition fast, and those are materials you use to build your fire. That's why we're using mainly pine for our whole top layer of this thing and then oak at the bottom. Okay, so now you're going to take, you're going to process down about 20 match size sticks of fat wood, or at least pine that's got some fat wood in it. And then you're going to create feather sticks. And the best way to do that is just to get your knife stationary and pull that wood toward you. This is what you're looking for. And you're going to want to do that to all 20 of those sticks. And get them stacked in there just like that. Be patient. A hundred percent of your success when it comes to fire starting is going to be your preparation of the material. If you prepare things correctly, you'll have good success when you light your fire. If you don't, you won't. It's really that simple. But by putting the larger end of that stick up into the fire lay, that's going to allow it to catch these smaller feathers and travel up the stick just like it would a match. Okay, so once we've gotten to the point where we've got 19 of these sticks cut and we're down to our 20th one, this one's going to become our match. So I'm kind of gonna be real easy with this one and get some really fine curls because I want this one to be lit in five seconds with a lighter. And then I'm gonna light the rest of my fire lay off of this stick. So this is going to become my match stick. So if we've got our fire lay correct, one one thousand, <laughs> there's the one second fire. Now we shouldn't have to do anything except maybe pull this lay a little more over the top like this. And we should be good. If you have got wet material on the bottom from all this rain we've had out here and this pine being wet and the oak below that being wet, you're going to have to have a good long burning twig bundle like this on top to heat and dry that up so it can burn down into those lower layers to get that self-feeding action. Okay guys, I appreciate you joining me out for another video today. I appreciate all your views, all your comments, all your support. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, and everything that you do for Self-Reliance Outfitters. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks guys.